Hey guys, a few years ago, I did a couple video reviews for this company here, Vastfire. Um, some flashlight reviews. They had a series of like hunting lights uh, that had pressure switches and uh, different types of LEDs, green LEDs, red LEDs. And after I did the reviews for them, they kind of kept contacting me almost every month to continue flashlight reviews. And I don't like to do flashlight reviews if it's not something that's kind of different or unique or like brand new to the market. Um, you know, I don't want to just constantly do flashlight reviews. So I would decline most of their requests. And then like probably like a year or so ago, they contacted me about this work light thing here. And this is actually really cool. I use this thing all the time. It's got white LEDs. It's got yellow LEDs. You can combine both of them. It's got stands, hooks. Like, I really like this light a lot. Red lights, flashing lights. Um, so anyways, they reached out to me and said that they had a bicycle light and asked if I would be willing to take a look at it. And I mean, I've got, I probably have a dozen or more bicycle lights already. And, you know, all the different like tail lights. And so I really didn't need another light. Plus, I don't do a ton of night riding. Um, when my son was younger, we would ride a lot at night in the neighborhood, or especially when we would go camping, and we would take like these types of uh, scooters, like these Razor scooters, and um, put the lights up on the handlebars of these. But anyway, they said that their light that they have is a little bit unique, and so I decided to take a look at it. So. There really is not any like branding or marketing. Like it doesn't have like their name anywhere on this. So I'm honestly not sure if somebody else is manufacturing this and then they're selling it kind of under their name. But I figured we'd take a look at everything and here's some of the specs. So there's basically gonna be three different LEDs. There's two outside ones and then one in the middle. And the outside ones are kind of like a floodlight. And then the center one is like a spotlight. And so we can see like what the uh, lumens are, run times and stuff like that. And you can have all of the lights on at the same time. So if you want just the spotlight on, it's that. If you want uh, the floodlights, it'd be that. But if you want everything together, it's gonna be 1200 lumens and that's gonna run for about two hours on the brightest, highest setting. Now you can still have all the lights on in a lower setting and basically double or triple your times. But, and if you order the bicycle light, it does come with a tail light, the mount and charging cable, stuff like that, but it doesn't come in the box. But I figure we do a quick unboxing and then go over all the features and specifications and then we'll get this thing mounted up and see what it's like. Let's first uh, get this open up. So, like I said earlier, we got the light itself. There's like a quick mount right here that will go around like your seat post or whatever. And then plus it does detach from there as well. And then the charging cable is USB-A to micro USB. And the actual bike light itself. Let's see what all comes in it. So there are two boxes in here. This is probably the mountain stuff because I hear stuff in here rattling around. Let's get it opened up. So it looks like there's two mounts here. We have like the main one and then this one here. And this probably has the light and then I assume a charging cable for it. So it's everything there. Charging cable for that is type C. Um, I wish that they were the same because now you do have to have two separate cables, whereas one cable would have charged both things. And then here is the light itself. We'll kind of take a glance over it, see if I see any type of blemishes or problems with the anodization. Everything seems really nice on it so far. Lens looks clear. Um, okay, that was just something on it. 
from packaging or whatever. So this model is the VA B01 from Vassfire. So I just looked and there aren't any instructions included with this at all. Um, so hopefully it's not too difficult to figure out. Grab you guys some unofficial measurements on it. So we're probably just past three and three quarters long. Uh, like one and three quarters wide. And I'm gonna go from the bottom down there. Just shy of one and a quarter. And then a weight on it is just over seven ounces. And then with that bracket, 8.8 .8 ounces. All right, so kind of going over things, we'll kind of go front to back. So we got the three LEDs here and they are different color temperatures. The two outside ones are like in the 3500 or so Kelvin range. So it's a little bit more of a yellowish, warmer color. And then the center one, I believe is around 5000 or 5300 Kelvin. Um, so it's more of a little past neutral. It's going toward like the white side. Um, and then you can combine them for like 4,000 some odd Kelvin. Um, and then it is kind of like a neutral. Over here, these are actually part of the lights and the lens is cut out to allow the light to come out sideways just a little bit so it, it spreads the light just a little bit more for you. On the bottom, only thing we have is like where the mount will go. Uh, this can slide in, I think, either direction. I don't see anything that would stop it because it's got a grooved one this way, that way, and that way. So you should be able to slide it either way. Um, so up here, this is one of the unique features. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to check this out. It actually has like a LED display or an OLED display that will tell you your battery percentage and stuff. And we'll go over that in a bit. Um, I believe this is obviously the only control. So this is gonna control our lights. And I don't think it's like up and down the way it kind of looks. I think one of them is gonna control like the spotlight and then the other is gonna control the outside lights, uh, but we'll go over that again, no manual. Um, and then on this back side is another unique feature and kind of another reason why I wanted to check this thing out. So this is where we're gonna charge via that USB-C area, but this is actually a power bank or battery bank as well. And it has a USB-A port right there. So you can actually put your phone up on you know a mount on your bicycle as well and if your phone's you know the battery's going dead or whatever you can run your cable over and charge your phone um, or if you're using gps or whatever it might be on your bike or whatever um, you know these are good for e-bikes and stuff like that as well uh, but you can charge up whatever device you have from this and we'll test that out here in a bit all right so we'll try to play with this and see what we can figure out so i just hit it and it is the center light uh, that is on, and it's showing that we're at 93% battery remaining. So I'm gonna toggle through this and see if that changes that brightness. That's actually pretty warm. I've, I assume that's probably the highest setting, but we'll see. So it looked like it dimmed down, it dimmed down. We got a flash, a faster type flash. That might be like an SOS beacon there, and then off. Uh, so let's hit it again and see if it, so it looks like you have to cycle through those. There is no mode memory. So if you're on this setting and you want to shut it off, let me make sure, let me hold it, make sure. But yeah, it looks like you do have to cycle through completely all of them to shut the thing off. I don't really care for that. I, I wish I could just turn it off. All right, now let's check the bottom one and... Yes, that's definitely the outside ones now. And you can see that that is a different color on my hand. It's more of a yellow. And then that lit up green down there. And I assume it's gonna be the same thing. We probably have a step down, another step down, the same blinks, and then off. All right, let's figure out how to get both on at the same time. So I've got that one on. Uh, that just switched it. So it's got a blue light when that's on, a green light when that's on, 
but they are both not on at the same time. Uh, let's double click and see what happens. Blue and green are both on now. And yes, all three LEDs are on. So that is how you get that. Now let's see if we can switch between. So all three are still on and I am still able to go down through the different modes, uh, but no flashes it looks like. So let's do that again. And let me try this button and see if it does the same thing. So either button, when they're both on, will cycle you through the different modes. So we got a high, medium, low, and then off, but no blinks uh, whenever you have all three lights on together. And just looking, it actually does say that. So when you have the what they call the passing beam, which is your side lights, your distance beam, which is a spotlight, you get those three modes only. And then when you use the individual lights, you do get a flash and an SOS. Kind of real quick, just running through the outputs. So with that spotlight on the highest setting, it's 700 lumens. On the next setting, it's 350. The camera adjusts so much, so it's hard to tell exactly how much it changes. The lowest setting is 175. And then once you get into your flashes, they're each 700 lumens. So the same as that highest setting. And then on the wider uh, lights, when you turn that on, it's at 500 lumens. Um, and then when you go lower, it's 250, then 125, and then it goes back to 500 for each of the blinks. And you can switch, like if you're on the spotlight, um, at let's just say the highest setting, and then you want the outside lights instead, you can just hit that and it switches. And you can see that color temperature difference. See how there's a nice hot spot right there. And then see how that's more diffused now and a different color. Whenever it gets dark out, I'll obviously you know, show what these lights look like. But these little side lights here, let me show you this here. So I got all three lights on, which you don't have to, but even pointing away from my hand, you see how that still shines over there? Because it allows light to come out here. So kind of like in your peripheral, it'll still show that. All right, let's make sure that that battery bank portion works the way it's supposed to. I don't know if you have to turn anything on or if you just plug it in and it works just by plugging it in, we'll see. Uh, it's shown there and yes, it did come on. It took it a couple seconds, um, but you just plug it in and then it starts charging whatever device you plug into it. And then I also brought a battery charger out here. I'm gonna see if it'll charge this. So I could technically put batteries in here and then charge off of this. And yeah, it powered it right on right away. So that definitely does work. So I'm gonna throw this on the charger, get it up to 100% while it's charging. We'll go over the tail light. All right, we'll just kind of quickly go over the tail light here. I don't see any branding anywhere on it at all. Uh, at least the the bicycle flashlight did say vast fire. It did say the model number, but I don't see anything here. Um, it's very very lightweight. Um, I might bring the scale back out and get a weight on that, but the mount here is pretty basic, but it will definitely do what it needs to do. And it looks like you can actually mount this light either direction. So if you want to run it this way, uh, like horizontally, you can. Or if you'd rather run it vertically, you can switch that around and put it in that way. And it does lock in there pretty secure. And you have to move that lever to kind of pull that back out. That is the charging port up here for the micro USB cable. Just kind of pull that out of the way. So there it is. Um, 
I might charge this up and see if we get like any flash or anything like that to know like when it's charging, when it's fully charged, but we'll do that here in a bit. All right, we'll get this turned on here, see what this looks like. So you got a, a solid red. Uh, looks like there's five LEDs. Got some flashing. Some more flashing. That's definitely will get somebody's attention. Let you be seen. And this is another flash. So it looked like there was four modes there. Solid. One flash. That flash. Yeah, I would say that that one right there probably will let you be seen the most at night. If I'm being perfectly honest, the bike light felt very well made, like it's kind of quality parts and components on that. This feels kind of cheap. Um, it's very thin plastic. I don't know exactly uh, what the waterproof rating is on it, but this does not seal real well. And it's like the slippery, just thin kind of plastic. got both lights fully charged before we get them mounted onto the bicycle itself I did want to show you guys this mount um, I said that I thought that it could go either direction and what I mean by that is that you can slide this on this way so you can mount the mount either either direction um, or it can go like this but once it's on the bike, you can't slide the light in from either direction. There's this little lip right there. So if, if I mounted it like this, I can only slide this on like this. I cannot slide it this way too. Just wanted to clarify that. The other thing is this mount seems to kind of be like specifically made for this uh, bike light. You can see how there's like these notches and then how it's like angled. Well, this will like lock in here and snap in and then it, it will not move. And then you have to push this little lever right there to slide that off. Like if you wanted to take it off and either charge it back up or use it as a handheld. And I have all of these other mounts from different lights and different things. And basically none of them will work on this. Out of all of these, I found one that will slide into the spot, but it doesn't lock in. So I don't know if I would trust that, like if I were going on trails or off-road or whatever, if it's jarring, this thing could just slide right out of there. So um, it does seem like it's kind of specific on that. I do have one of these universal mounts um, and they make these big enough that you can fit something like this in it. This one happens to not be big enough. You would place your flashlight in it and then snap that over there, put that on your handlebars, and this will fit a wide variety of flashlights. And they do make them that are bigger for like big, huge round flashlights that I think would work for that um, if something happened to the original mount or something. And while we're talking about mounts, that other little one that came with this is a GoPro mount. So, and it should lock into place here as well. Yeah, it does, it snaps in. So if you already have a GoPro mount on your bike, this will slide right into it. All right, like I said earlier, I can mount this either this direction or this direction on here, whichever I prefer. And one other thing to tell you, you do not have to take this like all the way out you just have to unscrew it so far so that this thing will, will basically clear the end like that right there and then put it over your handlebars and then put it back down. I do wish that this was kind of like stuck on here and not like separate like that. It still spins and works fine, but I think it would be a better design to have this black knob basically be affixed to this up here. All right, so I have ran into a slight problem with my bike. Um, I don't know exactly what the thickness of the handlebar is here, but I have this as tight as it will go, and it will still just spin all around. Um, I've got some things from other mounts that I had that I'll have to put on here, but just so you know, this is a mongoose bike, 
and it definitely will not get tight on there. So basically I'll put one or two of these pieces um, inside of this to give it a little more thickness and then see if we can tighten it down. All right, I end up using just one extra piece of that like rubber in there and that thing is super solid now, won't go anywhere at all. All right, so I just changed my mind again. That screw sticks up a little bit high because of how tight I had to get that. And I'm actually scraping the bottom of that, trying to press that on there. So I'm going to put another chunk of rubber in there uh, to make that screw not be sticking up so high. All right, got the second piece in there and the screw is not sticking up past it. So we should be good to go now. All right, there is the headlight mounted. Um, I'll have to wait till nighttime. I might have to make some adjustments. I might have to point it down toward the road just a little bit more. But that'll give you an idea of kind of what it looks like. The rear should be a whole lot easier than the front. I literally should be able to just put this around like the seat post and snap it on. Yeah, the rear took one second to install it. Um, and I didn't realize it inside. Uh, but this is basically like on a swivel. Uh, so you can angle this in multiple positions. All right, give you guys an idea of what these lights look like. It's not the darkest at night just yet. You know, the darker it gets, the brighter the lights get. But we'll still go ahead and give you an idea. I'm going to put the tail light on the setting that I would personally use. Which is this setting here. And that's a tail light from about a hundred feet away, uh, plenty bright. I mean, pr probably from two or three hundred feet away, pretty easily. And then let's get the headlight turned on. That is with the spotlight right now on the highest setting. Kind of go through these, and keep in mind that the iPhone does adjust. It's the kind of medium setting, the lower, and we got the flashing modes, and then back off. This is more like the uh, flood beam on its highest, kind of middle, low, and that's still a lot of light even on low. The flashing of it. All right see what this looks like here kind of going down the road we will have a car coming up here on us I can see like the reflectives on the mailboxes, you know, probably a good 150 yards away. The actual road itself, I can probably see at least 200 feet right now. It's actually a really nice beam. It definitely uh, puts a nice spot and flood. You can see both sides of the road pretty easily. Let me give you guys a, a comparison between the Vast Fire and one of the other bike lights that I have. Uh, they're actually a similar price. All right, this is the other bike light. You can see there's like a ring. So you got like the spotlight and then there's almost like a darkness and then like an outer ring. And that's what it looks like on that tree there across the street. 
And then now let's do the Vasfire. Again, I know that the camera will adjust, but you can basically see what a huge difference that is. Okay, and that's Vasfire. And this is the other one. So hopefully seeing the vast fire in use gave you some ideas of its capabilities. And then after the ride, I pulled this one back off to compare it to this one. I just kind of standing in the driveway and there almost was no comparison. Um, the, I mean, this thing was like a hundred times brighter than what this one was. And to be honest with you, they are, I think I paid maybe $30 or so for this one with a tail light. Um, so between like riding around and then comparing with the other one, this was on for probably somewhere between 25 and 30 minutes total on that highest setting. And we're still at 96%. Uh, so we only lost 4%. So this should last at, at least the two plus hours that it said on the highest setting. And then obviously it would last a whole lot longer if you just use either the spotlight or the floodlights. Some people are not gonna like this because you cannot remove or replace the, the batteries in it. Um, so this light here, again, I probably paid 25 or $30 for it and haven't used it in a little while. And part of it is uh, my negligence here, but you just see all that stuff just fall out. Look at this, this is what happens with alkaline batteries if you don't remove them. So this light is probably ruined. I don't even know if I can clean the contacts off to be able to use this, but that that stuff is just dropping all over the table right now. And here's another light from Schwinn. Um, and if you look in here, they're going to be basically exploded as well. And stuff's going to be all over those springs and contacts. So if you're not using these types, you definitely need to remove those batteries and not make the same mistakes I have done, but I did have some trouble with this mount on my bicycle and it says that it fits 20 millimeter to 35 millimeter. I don't know exactly what the thickness of my handlebars are, but it, this as it was would not fit. So I had to use those extra little like rubber pieces in there, which I had laying around, but so just kind of keep that in mind. And then I did put a kind of big gouge in that uh, because basically when I got it tight, this thing stuck up like this. And when I went to slide the light on, it basically just like scraped back there. So I had to add that extra piece. And by doing that, it allowed this to be lower like this here. So I've had this bike light for a couple weeks now and the Amazon price shows it at $53, uh, but the entire two weeks, I check almost daily, there's been a coupon on there for $15 off. Uh, so basically it's a $38 uh, bike light and it's definitely worth that. This is actually constructed really well. It's plenty bright. It's got the LED display that shows your batteries. It's got the uh, power bank feature. So overall, I think it's definitely worth uh, the $38 price. I also like how you can have this on your bike and then within a second, take it off and then use it, you know, as a handheld light if you want to. So I will leave an Amazon link for this Vastfire light. Um, if you're interested in finding out more information about it, um, or if you want to pick one up, it'll be down in the video description. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And that's going to be it on this one. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.